Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com. In Michael Mann's hockey stick, he showed declining temperatures for 900 years until about the year 1910, when temperatures suddenly started spiking. The blade of the hockey stick is based on the global temperature record from government agencies. According to Michael Mann, the years from 1800 to about 1910 were the coldest of the last millennium. However, the real world, outside the halls of academia, seems to have a different opinion. Glaciers were retreating rapidly around most of the world during the second half of the 19th century, which according to Michael Mann was a very cold period. If you're going to believe Michael Mann's hockey stick, you're also going to have to believe that glaciers melt when it's cold. Most of these glaciers formed during the Little Ice Age, so if you want to believe Michael Mann, you're also going to have to believe that glaciers form when temperatures are warmer. This graph makes no sense scientifically, but politicians love it. So let's take a look at the global temperature record in 1910, which according to Michael Mann was one of the coldest years of the last millennium. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration has almost no thermometer data from Africa, the Middle East, and much of Asia. And it's the same story in South and Central America. There's almost no data outside of the United States. But the lack of data doesn't stop NASA from making very detailed temperature maps from the year 1910 based on completely fictional temperature records. The only country in South America which had good coverage in 1910 was Uruguay. NOAA has thermometer data from 1910 for these six stations in Uruguay. And they also have thermometer data from the massive urban heat island of Buenos Aires. The Buenos Aires Observatory, where the temperatures are taken, is located in the middle of a very large urban area. We're going to look at the Buenos Aires temperatures in a minute, but first let's look at the six stations in Uruguay. You can see that at those six stations in Uruguay, there's been a small upwards trend since 1880. But after the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration tampers with the Uruguay data, it becomes a much stronger warming trend. This is the measured temperature trend, and this is the adjusted trend, which is much higher. Now let's take a look at how NOAA corrupts the Uruguay temperature data. What NOAA is doing is contaminating all of the Uruguay temperature stations with data from the urban heat island of Buenos Aires. According to NASA, the urban heat island affected temperatures at Buenos Aires are somewhat mitigated between the measured and the final data sets. But this graph from NASA appears to be fake. The actual adjustments at Buenos Aires slightly increase the temperature trend rather than decrease it. This is the measured temperature and this is the adjusted temperature. All they did was cool the past a little bit. NASA wants you to believe that they're making the temperature record from Buenos Aires less corrupt, when in fact they're doing the opposite. Now let's take a look at these two stations, at Buenos Aires and at Mercedes Uruguay, to see how the Buenos Aires data is corrupting the Mercedes temperature record. The black line represents the trend at Mercedes Uruguay, and the red line represents the trend at Buenos Aires. Mercedes in black shows little or no warming since the start of the temperature record, whereas Buenos Aires in red shows a strong warming trend. But after NOAA tampers with the data, both stations show a very similar warming trend. This is the measured data, and this is the adjusted data. There's nothing legitimate about what NASA and NOAA are doing, Urban heat island affected temperatures should be excluded from the global temperature calculations. But instead of excluding the worthless UHI affected stations, NOAA is using them to corrupt all the good stations. What they're doing isn't legitimate science, rather it's politics. Toto has been pulling back the curtain on the climate scam for almost 16 years. You can visit him and his family on the web at realclimatescience.com.